Hey guys, welcome to part two of lesson one, um, unit two. Um, so I don't want to like stop this, um, but I, we're going to do this in class, so don't worry about that. But I went ahead and filled it out for the key, um, but that's why I'm purposely skipping that. Um, so part two, um, you should have learned this in geometry, but if you didn't, we're going to go ahead and talk about it. Um, so when you have angles, those are listed with um, capital letters, but the sides opposite the angles, they um, match up with the angle, but they're going to be in lowercase. So that it looks like that. So just make sure, um, so opposite of angle A is side length A, little a. Um, so when you have a problem like this, it gives you information um, it really doesn't matter where you put your letters unless it specifies in the problem, um, but you just need to make sure that it's in the correct form like this. So let's look at this one. Okay, we have a right triangle with the right angle at C. So I just know when I'm starting out, and this is big C, this is little c. Okay, and it gives us some other information, but it really doesn't tell us anything else. So I'm just going to call this big A, little a, and big B, little b. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in um, what it tells us. So a is 36, little a is 36. So I'll put 36 in there. And then c is 85. Okay, and so it says um, determine the exact values of the ratio of the six trig functions for angle b. So we're right here. So we're going to use those six trig functions. So the sine of b is going to be, oh wait, I don't know that, so I'm going to have to figure that out. So let's do Pythagorean's theorem to figure that out. So I have 36 squared plus b squared equals 85 squared. So I'm going to push pause and figure that out for you. So if you did it correctly, b ends up being, this b ends up being 77. So, um, and again, it was just using that. So the sine is going to be 77 over 85. So that would make the cosecant of B 85 over 77. So go ahead and do the other four trig functions and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so um, here are all the six trig functions. And so double check my answers with your answers. Um, so now we're going to talk about the definition of cofunction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the definitions down and then we're really going to talk about it. Okay, so I wrote these down for you and go ahead and um, just copy these down. And um, so what this means is I'm, I'm going to use this one for example. So I think it's better if I just like give you um, like an example with numbers. It probably makes more sense. So if I have the sine of 30 degrees, so think about, think about your unit circle, um, the sine of 30 degrees, and um, that is actually equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. So sine and cosine are co-functions of each other. Okay, so let's think about this. So in the unit circle, the sine of 30 degrees, that is one half, and in the unit circle, the cosine of 30 degrees I'm sorry, the cosine of 60 degrees is also one half. So I want you to notice that these always are complementary. So they're always going to add up to 90 degrees. And so that's what this is saying. So um, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of 90 minus 30 degrees, which is 60. So just know that they're going to be complementary of each other. And these come up quite often, so just know um, sine and cosine are cofunctions, and tangent and cotangent are cofunctions of each other, and secant and cosecant are cofunctions of each other. So be on the lookout for those. So I want you to go ahead and try this, and then um, push pause, and we'll come back and check our answers. Okay, so all of these, um, if I were to like add any of these together, they all are going to add up to 80. So that's how we found it. And then also, um, don't just tell me like um, the cosine, the cofunction to the sine of 52, which is 38. Make sure you know that it's the cosine of 38 and secant and cosecant. Okay, so 
this is another form that it will appear. Um, so this is a little bit more difficult, but it's not too bad at all. So remember, we are not setting these equal to each other. So like this whole thing is equal to this whole thing, but don't forget that these two values are complementary of each other. So the way I'm gonna set this up is this angle plus this angle is equal to 90 degrees. Um, so let's see, we have five theta, and then um, negative eight plus 13, what's that, five, equals 90, and then just solve for theta. So theta is gonna equal 17. And um, go ahead and try number two, but that's all you have to do on there. Okay, so you should have gotten theta equals 12. Um, the next thing we're going to do is, I also look at this as like a little puzzle that we have to figure out, but we're going to use um, the things that we have learned in this lesson and kind of pull everything together. So notice I don't have a random angle. I have a 30 degree angle and I have a 60 degree angle, which we talked about like way up here. Um, those are going to come into play. So let me go back down here. And um, there's a few different ways to set this, set this up. Um, I just kind of look at it like, okay, so I'll start right here. So um, let's pretend like I want to solve for this. So I'm going to say, oh, you know what, guys? We're going to put in a 12 here. That's what's missing. So we're going to start there. Um, so I don't want to start on this side. Sorry. Um, so please make sure that you add this 12 in your notes because it is missing. Um, okay, so I don't think I can do anything on this side of the triangle because I have too many variables. So I'm going to use that 12 and um, I don't know, maybe sine. So I'm going to say sine of 30 degrees equals C over 12, opposite over hypotenuse. And um, so there's, a, there's definitely a few different ways you can do this. Um, what I like to do is just ask myself, okay, well, what is the sine of 30 degrees? And we learned that the sine of 30 degrees is one half. So then I just like cross multiply and divide if needed. So C equals 12, and just about that C equals 6. Now there's definitely um, ways that you can use the, um, like, let's come up here. Um, so, you know, like to use that geometry version or like, um, so I know that the 20 degree angle is half the 50 degree angle. You could do stuff like that as well. Um, I just like to keep it consistent and use trig functions there, but it's pretty much what your comfort level is because I'm pretty sure you've done problems like this in geometry um, using those um, triangle properties. So um, let's see, I'm going to take this out and put six. Now at this point, you have 12 and you have 6. So you could use Pythagorean theorem to find M. You can also, um, let's see, we could do tangent or we could do cosine. So like the cosine of 30 degrees equals M over 12. And then so the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And again, cross multiply. 2M equals um, 12 square root of 3 divided by 2. M equals 6. So I know that m is 6 square root of 3. So you can definitely do that, um, again, at your comfort level. Okay, so now we can transition. Now that we have this 6 here, we can transition over to this triangle. So go ahead and see if you can do that. Okay, so here is a lot going on here. So we have m is 6 square root of 3. We found that c was 6. Okay, and in my work down here, I'm going to scroll down here in a second, I found that N is 2 square root of 3 and D is 4 square root of 3. So um, this is where I found D. And then N, um, I hadn't used tangent yet, so I just used tangent. Again, you can use any trig function you want to that works with the information that you have. And that is it.